to you Withholding nothing Withholding nothing I surrender all to you Everything I give to you Start that song off tonight Withholding nothing Let it sink in your heart Withholding nothing Withholding nothing Withholding nothing My brothers and sisters You're listening to another segment of the TMA Radio Show Midweek Praise I'm your host Minister Ackridge And we're withholding nothing Come on Let's praise God today Midweek Praise Thank God for keeping us through the middle of the week We call hump day Thank God that he kept us Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and Wednesday, because if you're listening right now, if you're breathing right now, he's kept you, and you need to give God praise, you need to give him glory, for he's worthy to be praised, I owe it all to you, God, withholding nothing, it's time to give God our all, Let, let's give God everything, withholding nothing back from God, who woke us up this morning, who started us on our way, who continue to bless us, who continue to forgive us in spite of, amen. I'm talking about a mighty God. I'm talking about the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end God. I'm talking about the creator of this world and the next. I'm talking about the never, never failing God. And that's who we're praising tonight. That's who we're thanking God for midweek praise tonight. We're going to continue this, this wonderful midweek praise broadcast Amen. Amen. We bless God tonight. For all you listeners, thank God for you tuning in every week, listening, and invite somebody in. Invite somebody in. Please invite somebody in. And if you have something you would like to say during a live broadcast, hit the instant message board. The message board is open. You can type all you want and I'll read it when I can get when I get as soon as I see it, I'm gonna get to it. So go ahead and right away type all you want. 
And we're going to continue this next song. I want to dedicate, dedicate it to all of those that are bereaving. Those that has has had a series of things to deal with in the past week. My, I, my neighbors, your neighbor, our friends, the people that we know that was brutally murdered and killed last a week ago and we are gonna pray that the family continue to be strong hold your heads up continue to bond with your family for and for with bonding you find strength because we can encourage each other that we can stand and throughout what we are dealing with so I want to dedicate this next song to all of those that has buried loved ones in the in the past few weeks month year or you still in dealing with it we want to pray that this song comfort you because i need you to stand i need you to keep marching it it's rough it hurt it rips you apart but i want to encourage you tonight that god never fails the enemy got you if you if the enemy is talking to you and telling you where's God God is right there it's in order design bad things happen and we know it look at the world what we in but the God has the plan he is he's gonna make everything right for us I promise you so my brothers and sisters that are going through I want you to keep going and keep moving and keep putting your best foot forward and we're gonna let you hear this song right now I need 
need you to survive. I need you to survive. You can make it. Trouble don't last always, and the storm surely don't last always. Look to the hills we're coming your help, for our help coming from the Lord. Amen. I need you to survive, my family, my brothers and my sisters of all nationalities, background, race, whatever you want to call it. God created us all. In, in his image, he created us, man and female. And we bless God for that creating us. We thank God for that. And we thank God for you. Tonight on Midweek Praise, we're going to continue to praise God through song. We got mini Bible study coming up. In a little bit, we got weather for you also. So I want you to stay tuned and enjoy the tonight midweek praise. Think about all the things that God has done for you. It's easy for us to think about what we don't have, what, what we lack and what we want, but what we got right now. And we have a roof over our head. You know, I'm in the city of Raleigh, you know, looking around and so many people with signs up. You know, some really need it and some are just don't want to work but you're looking at all the people that are out even when you see some going into the different restaurants and different sides of town we thank god that we got a roof over our head we got clothes on our body and we thank him praise praise god that there's something that we was able to eat on our tables these are some of the things that you go home and you know you can open open up loaf bread and make you a sandwich. But somebody might not have that luxury. Regardless of how they got into that state, somebody don't have that luxury. And so we just praise God for what we do have. And we're going to continue this show and remind yourself and tell somebody else we st they still got time to tune in and log in. To listen to the night's nice broadcast that something said, something heard may brighten their day, enlighten their spirit, and motivate them to keep on keeping on. This is my season 
Man, I don't care what your circumstance is. It's already getting better. It seemed like the songs are, are, are lining up right in order, man. I, I just picked random songs, you know, as I get them, and they just coming in the hand. This is your season for favor. Amen. If you want a business, go out and get the business. If you want something else to do, do it. This is your season. This is your season for growth. This is your season to get the benefits. Go ahead and get it. Have a positive, positive thinking. And matter of fact, don't be associated with nobody that don't think and, and talk the same talk that you talking. But that's a whole nother dis discussion in itself. But I'm telling you, if you want something, go get it right now. Get it. Amen. Let God provide and, and just go get it. He'll open the door. Don't you have to? You don't have to worry about that. You, he'll open the door. You just go to the door and open it. And then, matter of fact, not just open it, but step through it and step into abundance. Amen. We bless God. We bless God tonight. We're gonna go real quickly over the many, the many Bible study tonight. And tonight we got two words that we are just gonna talk about a little bit tonight. That first word is self sufficient you can write that down self self sufficient and I'm gonna read you the definition of self sufficient is needing no outside help in satisfying one's basic need I'm gonna read that again needing no outside help in satisfying one's basic needs. I'm not going to worry about the Joneses. I'm not worrying about what others have. I'm thankful for what God has given me and I'm going to climb from there. I'm going to climb from where I am. I'm not going to try to keep up with anybody. You're not here in this world to try to keep up with one another. This is not a race between each other. You don't have to buy a car just because your neighbors or they put new sets of blinds up and you want to do the same thing. And 
They built the fence and now you want to build a fence. They done went to a exotic on a exotic vacation and you don't wear your husband to death because you want to go on one too. We ain't here to keep up with the Joneses. Because like the definition tells us that needing no outside help in satisfying one's basic needs. So I don't need to keep up with what somebody else has got going on. I just thankful I'm thankful to God for what he's blessed me with and I'm going to take what he's given me thus far and build from that point to go up higher. Amen. I don't have to depend on someone putting putting the toilet tissue in my bathroom. You know that's a basic need. I can do that myself. I don't have to call somebody to bring in toilet tissue to put in the bathroom. I can do that myself because that's a basic need. I don't I don't need to, uh, anyone to make me happy. I can get happy for being alive. You all hear that? I don't need anybody to make me happy. I can get happy for just being alive. I can get happy for having a right mind. Isn't it just wonderful to be in a right state of mind? To be able to know and do and react in a right manner? You're not chained down, not in a padded room, you're not handcuffed and shackled and bound because you done lost your mind but 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 I have a right mind so I can get happy for having a right mind I don't need any outside help being thankful to God for what he's done for me in, in other words if now listen if by chance you do get happy for what God is doing in my life, then we both are happy because God's promise is true. We are both happy, not for the stuff, but because God's promise is true. Don't allow mark this down don't allow someone to bring your standard down and uh, and sometimes it's hard to disconnect from people that we've been around for years some somebody got a girlfriend that they hang around and it's hard for them to disconnect but the standard ain't the same your friend might not care about anything. They don't care about nothing. They don't even care how they look, how they dress, how they talk. And you have a standard. And somebody out here listening tonight might find it hard to disconnect from people that are bringing you down. You find yourself in the same spot because you allow yourself to get there. Because you put up with it. You deals with it. I'm not saying not to love your sister, not to love your brother. But if they're not walking and talking the same talk, you can pray for them and love them from a distance. Because if you hang around low standing, then what did that say about you? You got to ask that question for yourself. I can't answer. And, and, and I can use myself for an example. What would it be for, for me to have a standard. But walk through the mall with people that don't have no kind of standard. Don't care how they talk. Who they talk around. What come out inside their mouth. And I'm hanging with them chilling like we ace boom cool. I mean I'm just talking about chilling. I'm not, I'm not trying to get them a word. Uh, I'm not ministering to them. I'm just, we just hanging out because we cool. But I got standing. Now, 
How do I look? Going through the mall and, and, a, and a bunch of my, the homies hollering at girls and talking out the side of their face saying all types of nasty stuff. How did that makes me look? My standard is there, but what about what I'm hanging with the other folk? My, don't don't it seem like then then what you hang around is what you are sometimes? Now if I'm giving a word and and, and I'm and, you know because one thing about it, I'm not gonna be hanging around if I got a certain standard and I know who God is and God is in my life. I'm not gonna be hanging around certain folk anyway. I don't care how long you know. Them. You can love folk that you grew up with. And you can speak to them. Because there's some people out here, you know, uh, that, that changed their life and can't even speak to the homeboys because they scared. No, you, you have strength now. You can speak to them and you can say, hey, girl, how you been doing? And then you can talk. And if the uh, time is right, you can talk about the Lord a little bit in that conversation. And when it get too, too, too crazy, you know how you can control yourself. You can exit yourself. You don't have to sit there and stand and listen to it and... And, and and listen to all the, the the junk that's coming out their mouth. You can you can exit from it. So don't allow somebody, don't allow someone, to bring your standard down. You're self-efficient. You don't need no outside help in satisfying your basic needs. Your basic needs is is many things. It's not only the necessities of life, but it's also principles and guidance on how we react and interact with the, with the rest of society. You don't need no uh, help. If I'm going to do bad, I, I don't need your help to make me do bad. I, I'll do bad by myself. In other words, I'm not going to be nobody puppet. And they're going to tell me, hey, man, I'm going to go out here and uh, rob this store. Come on. No. You go by yourself and rob this store if you want to. But I pray that you don't. But if you're driven, I, I ain't going to have nothing to do with it. I don't have nothing to do with it. I'm going to try my best to say, brother or sister, you know you shouldn't do you You, 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 you can get killed because the police catch you. To be shoot out, anything can happen. You might can die, and I love you enough, and I don't want nothing bad to happen to you. Please think, reconsider, reconsider. Don't think, don't do it. But I don't need no outside help in satisfying my my basic needs in this in this life. And that's that's what we're talking about tonight. And and let's go with the word. Let's go to the word of God with the basic talking about basic needs. Amen. Turn with me to Philippians four. Fourth chapter and verse 19. Philippians, fourth chapter, verse 19. You got it? All right. You can write it down if you want to look at it later. We're talking about basic needs. Here the word of God says, But my God set, shall supply all your need according. To his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. And our God is woo you can't even you can't even add up to what he has for us. He he you, you can't even <laughs> grasp what the blessings that God have. It, 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 oh, if he gave us everything that he had designed for us, it'll overwhelm. It will over. It, it will. It will. It be too much. That's why he gives us the stuff that he know that's not going to take us down. He gives us stuff when we know when he know that we can handle it. But but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. God gives us basic needs. He supplied the sun. Amen. It gives us the body vitamin D. He, he, he allows the sun to come up to, to, to shine on those vegetables so we can eat. He, God created us. He knows we have to eat. So look what he does. He, 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 not only that, but he has minerals in the soil. And you plant that, that seed in the soil. And God, that, that nourishment already there, those minerals already there in the earth. And the water from the rain, and then the sun. Look at God. God doing it. God, just you. All you have. You do a little bit. You plant the seed, and God will give it water. God will give it sunshine, and it'll grow. And hey, and, and if you and you got good soil, it's gonna multiply. I'm telling you, it's gonna be. It's good. He supplies our basic need. You know, when it get too hot, sometimes you know he sends a storm, 
it cools it down, don't it? It, it might make it a little steamy sometimes, but but that 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 wind, especially when it cold, uh, rain at night and the wind is blowing, you know that that that's a nice little breeze. But he knows, he knows what to do. That's why it, look 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 how he created snow to clean up that air. You know, that air get purified. God, he do he do everything. He, he, our basic needs. He take care of the basic our basic needs. Amen. And then he gives us uh, the the bonus for every door that open. He he open for us. We just walk on through it. Psalms forty and seventeen. Listen now. But I am poor and needy. You might not have everything that you feel like you should have. But I am poor and needy. You know, you you poor and needy. You might need a little extra help time to time. You might need a little more than what you know than you are right now. But I am poor and needy. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. He ain't forgot about you. He ain't forgot about you. You know, every bill is due, and then now they, they you know, all the loans coming in, and all these mortgage loans, these college loans, and. The doctor bill's coming, and the light bill is there, and car insurance there, and, and and the hours got cut on the job. The Lord thinks upon me. He, the Lord think upon you. He knows what you're dealing with. Thou art my help. God is our help. You just need to know that you got to start praying and activating that for the help. You, you you need help, but you ain't never say, God, I need help. God just waiting for you to say, Lord, I need you. All he all he waiting on is, Lord, I need you. He just, just waiting on that. So when are you going to start doing it? When are you going to start asking in his name? You may be poor, but you ain't in the gutter. You may be needing some things, but you still have strength. You still have your sight, your ability to make something happen. You can't sit in your misery, but you got to make something happen. Because God supplies our needs. He's going to apply our basic needs and everything else bonus. Tell somebody you want the bonus. Hey, the bonus is coming. And even though you might have a situation, you seem like you're poor and needy, yet the Lord think of upon you and me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tearing, O oh my God. Sometimes you got to go to God. God, I need you right now. I need you to act right now. God, I need you now. I need this thing. I need this breakthrough now. You need to go to him and tell him what you need. And in the name of Jesus, I proclaim it that it is so, that it will happen. Amen. And Psalms 37 to 25, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. We have been young, we are getting older, and some that are listening may be already old. But they never have seen the righteous forsaken. God has never left us. He's never going to leave us. If you continue to put your trust in Him, He will be with you. He's going to be with me without a shadow of doubt. You gonna be? You've been young. You you're middle age. You're you're getting getting up there now in age 50, 60, 70. Now 80, 90. You old, and you have never seen the righteous forsaken. We are not put here to be Christian believers of God and to be toe up from the flow up. Because the righteous have never been seen forsaken. You, that's what I said, the righteous. And if you living crazy and sinful and cheating folks and gambling and wasting your life away, 
and you ain't acknowledge who God is and you don't walk in the way he wants you to walk, I can't say that for you. But if we believe in the, the all sin, all knowing wise God, and we trust his word to be true, we believe in him, we have faith, the size of a mustard seed is all it takes. But I have faith without a doubt. I know it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to be right now, the next minute, the next hour, the next day. But I know that God's going to make a way. Yet have I not seen the, the righteous forsaken, nor his seed, listen, begging bread. What? Neither have anybody young on through their life till they got old seen the righteous forsaken. Didn't say it won't gonna be tough. It didn't say that. It didn't say you were gonna won't gonna go through some hell and high waters. It didn't say that. It said the righteous will not be and have not seen to be forsaken. God will neither forsake leave or forsake us. He won't do it. Nor his seed begging bread. God supplies our need if we trust and do it and obedient. Then that's a key word. You need to write that down. Obedient. If we're obedient to the will of God, He's going to supply our needs. We already know that. We just thank Him for doing it. Thank Him for what He's going to do. But when you're living the worldly life and you don't went away from Him, then you see you might be begging. You might be begging for bread. For there will be poor among us always because God already knows that there's going to be many people that go away from Him. If you with Him, He's going to supply your basic needs. And if you are a disobedient child, and if you are one that that's walked away from him and you cuss him and and you 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 all you gonna be begging for bread. You and you it just it doesn't make sense. We have some hard times, but we might have to pinch pennies and pinch a nickel. And my mama said a long time ago when I was growing up, when you when I started working young, she said, son. She was talking about how learning, teaching me how to save. I was just started working, and uh, in high school, actually I started in middle school. But you know, back then you can kind of work under the table until you're 14 and a half. It's about 13, 14, about 13 and a half, 14. I'm working, working a job. I think I, it was three dollars and maybe 75 or three dollars and 60 some cent when I started working, and. She said, son, you save some of your money, you might want to uh, put it in a crack somewhere. And that's a, one of them old song, old, old uh, comments, old, old t things parents used to tell you back in the day. Is They say you go put some money up, better go put it in a crack somewhere. That means it was a rainy day might come and you need to put it up somewhere and store it like you don't even have it. Because when you really need it, you, can get, you got it. You got access to it. You know, I have become disciplined. I, I remember growing up spending all my money, spending every nickel I got. Boy, money burnt my pocket, burnt a hole in my pocket. But guess what? I learned from not on, from uh, self going through, not even having the money to do the basic things that I needed to do. And I said, enough, enough. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of just blowing my money. And if it wasn't a necessity, just going out here and blowing money because I got it, that stopped a long time ago. And some of y'all might need to listen to this. You got a thousand pair of shoes in the closet. You ain't even worn half of the shoes you bought. And you still want to buy a new pair of shoes because it's on sale. And you thought it you thought it was cute. And you got about 1,200 pairs of shoes in your closet. Y'all look. I know some of y'all listen there laughing. <laughs> you know it. Dresses with tags still on it. Pants, brothers, still got the tag on it. And there's some men that that's that's I like some of these women. I don't, some of them work, might be worse than some of these women out here. Some men out here, they they got so many shoes, they ain't never gonna wear them all. You just wasting money. And it's hard to sell some shoes. It you know, shoes almost like stock when stock go down. When, when you, you know, you might bought some stock for two dollars and went up to about forty, fifty dollars. You 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 made some money. But if you didn't watch it over a period of time, you bought it, it might be 50 cent by the time you look at it because the stock market go up and down. But shoes, if you, you know, you pay two, three hundred dollars for them, 
You ain't gonna get two, three hundred dollars back. You think that's right? So you need to. What you need to do is, yeah, go to the sale. But then you need to do this. If you're not wearing them, them shoes, some of y'all sitting on two, three, four, five hundred dollars, and you complaining that you can't go on a vacation. You got about four, five hundred dollars in your closet. When are you gonna have a yard sale? Y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying tonight? <laughs> this is, hey, this is this falling out with basic needs because guess what? You got all that money sitting in your closet. You ain't even wearing it. And this is for somebody listen, Somebody laughing. They, they smiling. I, I can feel their jaws jacked up right now because they know that they fit the category. You sitting on the, you sitting on a blessing. You know you got all that stuff. You ain't wearing. You ain't wearing it. You're not wearing it, and you need to do what? Have a yard sale and get you a couple of hundred dollars, you know, and then you you'll be all right. All right. Now let's continue real quickly. The next word tonight is efficient. Efficient. The the first word was self sufficient, and the next word is efficient. And I'm gonna read the definition. It says achieving maximum achieving maximum productivity with minimal waste effective effect excuse me or expense achieving maximum productivity with minimum waste effect or expense it doesn't cost anything to give love away it don't cost you nothing to give love away my time isn't wasted when I can show compassion to someone else you need to write that down say to yourself my time is not wasted when I can show compassion to someone else now this is key you have achieved Godliness when your heart continue to be in the right place. It's all about our heart. The heart conquers evil. It it, it, it heals a multitude of, of hurt. Love does. You have achieved godliness when your heart continue to be in the right place. Your heart had to be in the right place, cause we being we being Christ-like, we being godly, and and so we gonna have a, a a good heart. I don't have to think long and hard to be kind to you. I don't have to think hard, or I don't have to think long and hard to be kind to you. You shouldn't have to think long and hard to be a blessing to somebody else. You hear that? You shouldn't have to think long and hard. You know, I'm just, I don't know. I can't, I, I just, something about her I don't like. I just, you know, I, I don't know if I want to do it. No. If you got a, a godliness and a, and a good heart, you shouldn't think long. It shouldn't take you long and hard to think about it. You should, you should automatically know you're going to go ahead and do it. Instant. Because you got that type of love. And you got that discerning spirit. You're supposed to have that discerning spirit. And once the spirit tells you to do it, go ahead and do it. Because the other, the other man, the other spirit, him, he right, he right there. Listen to, you remember? God, God asked, say, what you doing here? I'm paraphrasing. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to and fro seeking who I can devour. So he in the middle of the conversation. He in the middle of this conversation. But we rebuke him and we we cast up, we cast him back, we cast him away. We plead the blood of Jesus on them. But here we're talking tonight. It shouldn't take you long and hard to be a blessing to somebody else. Because it doesn't cost a thing. It don't cost you nothing. How much do it cost you to bless somebody else? To bless a family in need? To bless a child in that family? Or to bless their husband or their wife? Or, or, or fix them dinner? Or, or buy them dinner and take it over there? How, how well, it don't cost you nothing. It don't cost you anything. It shouldn't be any doubt 
that I need to pray for Mr. Johnny and his family. Y'all see Mr. Johnny and his family going through? It shouldn't be a doubt in my mind. I need to go ahead on and pray for him. It shouldn't be a doubt. It should not be a doubt. It shouldn't be a hesitant. I need to go ahead. I see an issue there. I see something going on. I don't know all that's going on, but I know they, they need some prayer. I feel it, and I, I'm going to go ahead on right now. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to go ahead on and pray because I know that they need something. I am not. I shouldn't have no doubt. I don't care what you think you might know about somebody. You you might have seen somebody doing something wrong the, uh, just the other day. So so what? We not the we not the, we shouldn't be the bearer of bad news, and we shouldn't be wanting to kick the brother down any further. We need to start praying and praying for folk. We're gonna pray for Mr. Johnny and his family, regardless of what you think about Mr. Johnny or what you think about his wife. They got a family, and you got love in your heart. You are godly. And you're going to go ahead on and pray. You're not going to worry about anything else. So I'm gonna go, you're going to go ahead and pray. Love will make me more quick to do so. You see? Love. That word then came across a couple of times now. Love. Love will make me more quick to do so. To pray. To help somebody out when I can. To, to touch a life. To make a difference in somebody's life. That's what I'm talking about tonight. Now, and, and, uh, and achieving maximum effectiveness, don't you read Proverbs 21 and 5? It says, the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance. You got to have a plan. Achieving maximum effectiveness. And if you're going to get, the, if you want to build on your maximum potential, then you need to have a plan. How many times do you think of stuff and you ain't wrote nothing down? Not a thing. You got to write something down. The plans of the diligent lead surely, listen, to abundance. You got a plan. God gives you them thoughts. He gives you the knowledge to go out and do and to make. But if you don't put it into action, it ain't going to never happen. But the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance. But everyone... Who is hasty. Listen. This hurt. This is rough. But everyone. Who is hasty. A hater. Jealous. Or envious. Comes only to poverty. Everyone. Anyone who. Is hasty. Comes only. To poverty. They hate you hate. They got hate built up. They don't want to do no better and they mad with you cuz you doing good. They got the same opportunity, but they don't want to they don't want to put their ability that God given them to work. They don't want to be faithful to God. They want to live their life. They want to be hype. They want to do the thing that of the world, but they mad at you because you elevating. They telling you, oh, look at her. She thinks she's something. Just the way she just walked. You, you don't even. You're not even puffed up. But see that 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 that. The word says that everyone that is hasty. So if they hasty and they salty, they got they they salty and they don't like because somebody else being blessed. Hasty comes only to poverty. See if you got a, your mind, if your mind is transformed and renewed. And, and you know what? If you believe in God and you know God will supply your basic needs and if you want to achieve your maximum effectiveness on businesses, on life, then you need to have a plan. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance. Proverbs 16 and 9, the heart of man plans his way. These boys out here getting these young girls pregnant, they ain't no plan. They ain't got a plan. They still living with mama. They still living with mama. What kind of plan do they got? The Bible tells me the heart of a man. He didn't say the heart of a child or the heart of a teenager. Wet behind the ears. Don't know nothing about life. And just because they're 18, think they grown. You just... You just getting up there that's that's all i'm gonna say about it you just getting up there but the word says the heart of heart of a man the heart of man plans his way you hear that the heart my heart desire for me to be an entrepreneur 
God gave me the ability to, to become an entrepreneur, to know how to make money. And not only that, but he had put me in positions to be in corporate America. I used to be in corporate America. I, was, I used to have the white collar job. I've had blue collar job. You know, I've had corporate cards. I, I've been there. I've been there, done all of that. God has given put me in position to learn. In the banking industry, he taught me how to manage business. I don't need anybody to help me how to manage my my business. I don't need to pay somebody. God has gave gave me. He gave it to me because he put me in a business for seven years to learn learn from them. Amen. Financial Institute. You know, he taught me about, you know, in those institutes, learn how to to set up IRAs and what IRAs does and 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 a bank accounts, the different ones and and, you know, the best rates and all that different things like that. But the heart of heart of man plans his way. You got to have a plan. A man, a real man got a plan. He's the foundation of the home. He has a plan. He'll make a way. And if you get down to the nitty gritty. You watch. He gonna make a way. If y'all don't have nothing to eat, he gonna provide. He gonna make. He, some gonna come to that house. You understand me? Something is gonna come to that house. So you got to know that a that 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 a heart of a man, not a little boy, that think he is a man. You know, not not the ones you see out here getting all these young girls pregnant. I mean, laying here and there and everywhere. They ain't got no plan. And, and I'm telling you right now, I'm praying that I continue to teach my two in the in the ways that God has given to me, and teaching them values and their self worth that they don't go out here and take anything. This is what we need to be teaching our kids, because a man got a plan. And and guess what? When you become one, boy, y'all can y'all complement each other. You see what I'm talking about tonight? Y'all complement each other, achieving maximum effectiveness. The heart of a man plans his way, but but listen, but the Lord established his steps. See, <laughs> the I can I can have the plans, but guess what? God established my footsteps. He establishes the next move I need to make in my business, in my plan. You understand that? And if, if, if a man ain't got God. He, he ain't got the right plan. Because God establishes his steps. And if he think that he can do it or she can do it without God. Man, that's, that, that's going to take them about 40. It's, it, they could be like the children in the, in the wilderness. The children of Israel in the wilderness. 40 years wandering. You, 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 you mm. took all them years. You know, you started when you were 45, now you 72 years old, and then it came. Because you were doing it your way. But when you got to that 72-year-old range, you decided, you know what, Lord, I need you to do it. And now he done did it. Because he, he done, Lord establishes his, his steps. Your next plan, your next move, your next position. You know, which way should I go, Lord? And you need to let him do it. We got the plan because God gives us our thoughts. Amen. God gives us our thoughts. He gives us that. He gives us that. We have plans. and But here he establishes our steps. Amen. We bless God for the word uh, tonight. Then we pray that you understand that achieving maximum effectiveness is all in having a plan. All in the heart of man. And knowing that God directs our path and he establishes our steps and the basic needs he will supply your basic needs but he supply every need everything that we need God supply don't let nobody tell you any different let if they don't believe it you let them do it their way you do it way God say do and you watch how God continue to bless you and your family or and you and your household. Amen. Let, let's bless God for that mini Bible study tonight. We thank and praise God tonight. And we're going to continue this best gospel, the best praise talk show in America. Midweek Praise, the TMA Radio Show.
if you want to activate the spirit of God, you want God to come in and bless your heart. Sometimes you just got to give him praise for what he's going to do. Praise him for being in your life. You need to praise him going through and coming out. We thank God for this midweek praise and we're going to give God some praise for those that want to shout. Go ahead on. Let's get our shout on. Let's give our praise on because he's worthy to be praised. Every time we turn around, he continues to bless us. Every time we can think God has never failed us. Look at what God has done in your life. Look at how God has blessed your family and kept your kids. Look how he brought them back to their sense. Look at all the things that he's done. And if you hadn't got your breakthrough yet, then praise him because it's on the way. Praise him in your valley experience. Praise him for coming out of the valley because in the valley is the shepherd. Amen. You need to understand that in the valley he is with you. And you ought to give him glory. If it had not been for the blood of Jesus, where would we be? The blood has washed us white as snow. The blood has cleansed us in the inside. Amen. And we give God glory and we give him praise. So come on and help me give God praise tonight on TMA Radio Show. Uh, come on. Great love for me. Come on. I can dance, 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 dance all night. Yes, sir. Come on. Let's give him praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's going to open the door. He's going to open the door that you can't open. Come on. Give him praise. He's going to heal your body. When the doctor says there's no hope, come on, give him praise. Give him glory, give him praise. Come on, shout hallelujah. Your breakthrough, ah, your breakthrough, your miracle that you've been waiting on. Once you activate that praise, cancer is already here. Deliverance is already there. Come on. Yes. Ah, yeah, come on. I feel good. He woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Good gracious. We got eyes. We got a mouth to talk. We got arms to lift up and say hallelujah. Come on. I feel good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is an old song that we sang back home. Everybody would get together in our church and say, like this. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Until I die Somebody would get up and say I'm going to treat everybody right I'm going to treat everybody right I'm going to treat everybody right Until I
somebody else would get up and say, I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. You're listening to TMA Radio Show Midweek Praise. Now I'm breaking down. I want to make it over, but I don't know how. My heart is screaming and my faith is gone. I'm barely breathing, but I'm holding on. I'm so broken, numb to the pain. Lifeless, hopeless, I feel ashamed. Break these chains. I just need about two or three to tell me, call his name. Oh, pray for me, pray for me. I feel like giving up right now. Pray for me, pray for me. Lord, spare your child. Pray for me, pray for me. I need to know that someone cares. Pray for me, pray for me. Standing in the need of prayer. I don't need the money. I need your help. I feel my life is ending. I need your prayer. Could somebody call on Jesus to save me from myself? I've never been here before. Please help me. I'm so broken. Numb to the pain. Lifeless, hopeless. I feel so ashamed. Nothing, no one can seem to 
break these chains. I just need about two or three. Help me call his name. Oh, pray for me, pray for me. I feel like giving up right now. Pray for me, pray for me. Lord, please spare your child. Pray for me, pray for me. I need to know that someone cares. Pray for me, pray for me. Standing in the need of prayer. I need a word from you. Show me the way, Lord. I'm so confused. I can't think straight. And I know that prayer changed things. I need a word from you. Yeah, Lord, I'm trusting. I know you make a way when I can't see my way. You've always been right there. There aren't even words to describe just how great you are in all your majesty. You continually provide for me. There just isn't anything that you can't do. Lord, I've seen so I'll trust you all the more because you are you are the sovereign God the sovereign God and you're bigger than all bigger than all my problems every and every situation there is there is nothing, nothing too hard for the sovereign So I will put every situation into your capable hands. I don't have to know the plan because you are. You are the Sovereign, For the sovereign God. 
Tonight, we're looking at a low of 50 degrees, chances of rain, showers. Tonight, Thursday, chance of rain, high of 69 with a low of 42. Friday, chance of rain, high of 61 with a low of 37. And that's your two-day-and-a-half forecast. Amen. Get behind me, Satan. Oh, devil, get behind me. Get behind me. A miracle man
All right, all right. I got one more song tonight for Midweek Praise. We're wrapping it up. I want you to meet me here tomorrow night, Thursday, between 9 and 10 p.m., Thursday night. And hope you have a wonderful, wonderful night. Sleep well, get some good rest, and have a blessed, blessed day tomorrow. It's going to be raining, so make sure you got your umbrellas. And make sure you drive extra safe tomorrow. You know people are going to be flying around the road in this rain. So be cautious where you are and watch out for one another. I love you with the love of the Lord and be blessed.